This is the 17th video in our series looking at how we set up and configure a Synology NAS running Distation Manager 7. As we are looking to turn our NAS into a media server, we want to be able to stream video. So we're going to demonstrate how you install and configure Video Station onto a Synology NAS. In order to install Video Station, we first need to sign into Distation Manager using our administrator's credentials. Now from the desktop of the DSM, we're going to need to open Package Center. As there are numerous packages that we can install onto our NAS, to more quickly find Video Station, we're going to select the drop-down arrow next to All Packages, and from the list, choose Multimedia. Now from the smaller list of applications that are displayed, if we locate Video Station and choose Install, Video Station is first downloaded and then installed onto our NAS. It should be noted that if your NAS has been configured with multiple volumes, you will be asked which volume you wish to install Video Station onto. However, as our NAS only consists of a single volume, the Video Station package will automatically install itself onto Volume 1. We will know that Video Station has been installed when the Install button changes to Open. We're now ready to configure Video Station. If we close Package Center and then open Control Panel, under System we have an option called Login Portal. When we select Login Portal, we will find a number of tabbed settings. By choosing Applications, we can see a list of the Synology applications we currently have installed on our NAS. This includes the numerous ways that we can remotely access these applications. As Video Station is a web application, we will need to configure the settings to domain HTTP, HTTPS, and alias. Let's highlight Video Station and choose Edit. In order to access Video Station, we will need to use either the IP address or domain name of our NAS, along with the port number for Video Station. However, as port numbers are not particularly memorable, we can also assign a single word to create an alias that will make opening Video Station easier. So for example, if we use the word video as our alias for Video Station, we will be able to open the application from a web browser by typing the IP address of our NAS, a forward slash, and then the word video, rather than having to use Video Station's port numbers. As the internet consists of a multitude of services, in order to distinguish one service from another, we use port numbers. So just like tuning your radio to the frequency of your favourite radio station, we use port numbers to tune to specific services on a computer or server. While there are 65,535 possible port numbers that we can use, the first 1,000 ports are reserved for the most commonly used services. So for example, port 20 and 21 are reserved for file transfer protocol, and port 80 and 443 are reserved for HTTP and HTTPS services. However, as Video Station is not a widely used service, it does not require that we use a specific port. So while we will use the default ports that Synology suggests, we do have the ability to use custom ports for Video Station. Something that is particularly useful if you're looking to make it harder for hackers to be able to access your NAS. We also have the ability to point a specific domain name at Video Station, or control who can access Video Station via IP address. However, for now, as we are still in the process of setting up Video Station, we will not be changing these settings. After selecting Save, the options that we've created for linking to Video Station are displayed. If from the sidebar, we now select Shared Folders. As you can see, we have the shared folders that we previously created along with a new folder called Video. As the video folder was created when we installed Video Station, it will be where we store our video library. However, in order to add or remove files from this folder, we will need to assign a user with access rights. Let's highlight Video and then select Edit. 
Under General, we're first going to enable the Recycle option. Next, if we select Permissions, we need to give either a user or a group read-write permissions over the video folder. As we configured our groups in a previous video, we're going to select the drop-down next to Local Users and choose Local Groups. Then in the read-write column, we're going to tick the box next to Super Users as this group includes our My Doodads account. After clicking on Save, we next need to set Application Privileges for Video Station. From the sidebar, if we locate and select Application Privileges, we will see a list of applications and packages installed on our NAS. If we highlight Video Station and then select Edit, we can set which users or groups will be allowed to access Video Station. As we want all users of our NAS to be able to access Video Station, we're going to select Group and then tick the box in the Allow column next to Users. Let's click Save. In order for Video Station to work, we will need to install a media extension package. While this package simply allows specific media file types to be played through Video Station, in order to download and install the package, we will need to sign our NAS into a Synology account. So from the sidebar, if we locate and choose Synology account, we can either sign in using an existing Synology account or create a new account. As we already have a Synology account, we're simply going to sign in. However, as the sign in page uses a pop-up window, depending on which browser you're using, you may need to manually unblock the pop-up window. In Safari, we found that you first have to unblock the pop-up page, close the pop-up window, and then reopen the window. When you sign in, as a security precaution, you will be asked for a verification code. With our NAS now connected to our Synology account, we can install the media extensions. If we close Control Panel and then reopen Package Center, by once again filtering only media applications, we can see a package called Advanced Media Extensions. If we select Install, the package will be downloaded automatically and installed onto our NAS. It's worth noting that when the advanced media extensions have been installed, you can sign out of your Synology account and the extensions will continue to work. However, if the extensions need to be updated, you will need to sign back in. Let's now close Package Center and log out of DisStation Manager so that we can add a few simple files to Video Station. At this point, we recommend that you do not try to add your full video library to Video Station. This is because Video Station must first index each file, and indexing large numbers of files can take a lot of time. So instead, we suggest that you add only three or four videos so that you can test that Video Station is working correctly. As you can see, we have a folder containing a sample of videos that we're going to add to Video Station. In order for Video Station to correctly see and index these files, we will need to use a specific file name format. So if we want Video Station to index a movie, we will need to have the name of the movie followed by the date the movie was released, and then the file type extension. While most file extensions will work with Video Station, we recommend that you encode your videos using the same codec. So while our files are using different file extensions, they are all using the same H.264 codec. For television shows, you will need to use a slightly different file name format. So we need to start with the name of the series, followed by a dot, then S for series, followed by the number of that series, a dot, then E for episode, and then the episode number. Let's open the video network share on our NAS. While Video Station will manage your video library, as that library grows, it will start to become difficult to manage as you add or remove files. So we recommend that in your video network share, 
you create folders to divide and organize your content. Let's first create a movies and TV series folder. Now in the movies folder, we're going to create subfolders for different movie genres. For example, let's create an action, animation, romance, and drama folder. Let's now open the animation folder and move our sample videos into that folder. We now need to repeat the same process in the TV series folder. However, in animation, we're going to create a folder for the series that we're about to add, and then a subfolder for the season. We can now add our TV episode to that folder. Let's tidy up our desktop. We now need to configure Video Station, which will require that we sign into the Station Manager as an administrator. Now from the desktop of Disk Station Manager, if we open Main Menu, we will find Video Station. When we open Video Station, we are first presented with a pop-up called Feature Updates. Originally, Video Station was pre-configured with a plugin that would, when you add a video file, automatically retrieve the metadata for that file. This meant that when you browse your movie library, you would see information like poster art, release dates, an overall movie rating, and a synopsis of the film. However, due to licensing issues, Synology has removed this plugin, so we now need to add it in manually. Let's click on Go to Settings. In order to add a Video Info plugin, you will need to set up an application program interface with an online service like IMDB or the Movie Database. While setting up an API will not cost you any money, it is a little convoluted, so we run through the process in a separate video, which you will find a link to in the description to this video. If we select the tip box, under Apply, we are asked for an API key. In the API key field, we're going to paste an API key that we've already created. Next, we need to test the connection. As the connection reports successful, we can click OK and then tick the Apply box by TV Shows. Next, we need to choose OK to save our settings. We now need to return to Settings in order to correctly point Video Station at the two folders on our NAS that contain our video files. From the tabs at the top of the panel, if we select Library, we will see three presets. Movies, TV Shows, and Home Video. Let's select the Add Folder icon next to Movies. Now if we choose Select, we can browse the network shares on our NAS. By selecting Video, and then highlighting Movies, when we click on Select, Video Station will look to the Movies folder on our NAS for its library of films. After clicking OK, Video Station will start to index any films that it finds in the Movies folder. We now need to repeat the same process for TV shows. However, as you can see, in this instance, Video Station has automatically found the TV series folder for us. For now, we're going to leave the Home Videos preset unassigned, as we do not intend to make Home Videos accessible from Video Station. After clicking OK, we should find that the video content on our NAS is starting to be indexed, and our NAS is using our API to add metadata. You may have noticed that the video carousel for suggested videos is currently not working, so let's try and refresh the Video Station home page. It looks like we have an indexing issue so we're going to need to manually re-index our videos. 
If we close Video Station and return to the Station Manager by opening Control Center and then locating and selecting the option Indexing Service, under the heading Media Indexing, we have an option to re index our media folders. Let's click Re Index. We now need to wait for our NAS to finish indexing. Let's close Control Panel and once again open Video Station. As you can see, re-indexing has fixed our problem with the carousel. And as we add more movies, the carousel will start to display more random film options. However, as we are currently signed in as an administrator, we now need to test that our users can access Video Station. So let's close Video Station and log out of Distation Manager. Now if we open a browser window and type the IP address of our NAS, followed by a forward slash and the word video, when we press enter on our keyboard, the video station sign-in page will load. Let's log in using a standard user account. As you can see, the layout for video station is basically the same as that of the administrator's account. However, as a standard user, you will not be able to change the API settings or the location Video Station uses to find its video libraries. Instead, for a standard user, Video Station is used primarily to present and playback content. So while Video Station can be opened from any web browser, we prefer to use the DS Video app, which will work with Android, iOS, iPadOS, and tvOS. As you can see, if we use the DS Video app from a smartphone, tablet or media hub, when we sign in using a standard user account, we get a more Netflix-like user experience. So to summarize, in this video, we took a look at how you install and configure Video Station onto a Synology NAS. This was done by first installing Video Station, then setting application permissions, changing access rights to the network share called Video, installing the advanced media extension package, and then finally configuring and testing Video Station. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at installing and configuring the Synology Photos package onto our NAS.